Hi there. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Brad Wallen and I'm a branch manager for First Financial Credit Union in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've been a branch manager for approximately four years, but have over 23 years of financial industry experience along with managing teams from as small as two to well over 40. And lastly, I'm also a certified financial counselor. I want to thank each of you for joining me today live here on Facebook since we're going to be talking to you about one very important aspect of our financial lives, which is analyzing income. I want to share some startling statistics to begin with to illustrate the importance of analyzing your income and how keeping this a priority will pay off in the future. So let's get into the statistics. 97% of stress in the world is related to money, which leads to the lack of productivity, which in turn can hinder and adversely affect your ability to maintain your income level going forward. 36% of workers have less than $1,000 in savings. An additional 29% of retirees have a less than $1,000 in savings. And 78% of workers state that they are living paycheck to paycheck. 81% of Americans do not know how much they need to retire. And lastly, 11 million, which is approximately 5% of American adults, do not monitor their spending. And they don't know how much they spend on food, housing, or entertainment. As you can see by the percentages mentioned above, that over three quarters of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and the same three quarters of Americans don't know what they will need in order to retire. These statistics alone demonstrate the vital importance of knowing what your income sources are so that you, the consumer, know how to optimize your financial picture, your financial picture. Now let's begin today by talking about how we go about analyzing your income, since you have already heard it's vitally important to begin the process by knowing how much money you have to begin with. It is terribly difficult and almost impossible to begin any part of the fiscal responsibility process, such as budgeting, without first knowing your total income for the month. So let's jump right in. Let's first define or quickly define analyzing income. That is, which is to examine all your income sources methodically and in detail, which simply stated is you taking into account all of your monthly income sources and adding them into one figure. We'll discuss the types of income and how to calculate them on a monthly average. Let's review the two types of income that are most common. W-2 employees, in other words, you work for someone or a company, they take deductions out such as federal income taxes, Social Security, New Mexico state income taxes, etc before paying you the rest. Obviously what is left over, that's considered your net income. So that's the amount you would literally be depositing into your bank account or your credit union account. If you're self-employed, this figure can take some time to calculate and even harder to consistently use the same figure since as a self-employed person, your income levels are in constant change based off your level of business. Now the two other types of income that you'll need to consider to get the full picture those are income types such as tax refunds, gifts, rental property income, grants, scholarships, along with other governmental assistance. We'll briefly cover these in a few moments. Now let's discuss the most common type of income, which is a W-2 employee. You receive your paycheck from your employer with all deductions already taken out, leaving you again your net income or the amount that you're depositing into your credit union account. Depending on how often you're paid will be a determining factor in how you calculate your monthly income from your source of income. Let me give you an example. If you are paid once per week, you'll calculate your monthly income in the following manner. You're gonna use your net income on your paycheck, which we discussed earlier. Multiply, I'm sorry, you're gonna use your gross income from your paycheck. You're gonna multiply that times 52, which is the number of weeks in a year and then divide it by the number of months in a year. So you'll take that, divide it by 12. And so let me give you an actual example with numbers. If you're paid weekly $500 times 52 weeks, that's $26,000 per year. Divide that into 12 months, your gross income for the month would be $2,166. Let me give you another example. If you're paid bi-weekly, so that's every other week, 
say $1,200 bi-weekly into 26 weeks, that's gonna be $31,200. You're gonna then divide that by 12 months, giving you a figure of $2,600 per month. And one last example I'd like to share with you today is if you're paid only twice a month, it's simply your gross income times two, that would be your net income for the month. Now let's discuss another very important factor in analyzing your income, which is the ability to read and understand your pay stub. There are seven important factors on your pay stub that I'd like to cover with you today. Number one is your base income. So that's typically if you're paid per hour, 40 hours per week, that would be considered your base income. You also have overtime. That's any time that's over 40 hours per week. And typically that 40 hours is paid at one and a half times your hourly wage. There's also withholding deductions. There's flexible benefits, 401k contributions and loans. There's also garnishments along with child support. So let's talk about these seven factors in a bit more detail. So the seven factors I've just listed will have a direct impact on your income and need to be taken into account when looking at your overall income. So let's go into them. Number one, your base income, just as I described earlier, it's your hourly wage times the number of hours that you work per week. Overtime, again, is anything traditionally over 40 hours or in excess of, and it's normally paid at one and a half times your hourly wage. Withholdings, we mentioned this earlier as well, it's state taxes, social security, federal taxes, insurance, things of that nature. Flexible spending benefits, or flexible benefits, I should say, are, are things elected by you to come out on a pre-tax basis, such as a flexible spending account. Those are used for qualifying medical events that you're already aware of, and you take that money out, it's put into account on a pre-tax basis, it saves you approximately 25% on as far as your tax liability. You also have 401k contributions, another item that's elected by yourself as part of a saving or a retirement plan. 401k loans is where you've actually borrowed against the money that you've saved. And there's several purposes that that traditionally can be taken out, but you will pay it back and you pay yourself interest on top of that. And then lastly is garnishments. Or I'm sorry, second to last, garnishments. Uh, that's a legal item where a creditor is having a certain percentage of your paycheck taken as to pay back a delinquent debt that you might have had in the past. And lastly is child support, which of course is calculated monthly uh, from an ex-spouse that you're paying or you could potentially be receiving child support. So you're going to count it as part of a deduction or if it's actually an income source, you're going to want to count it as such. Now let's talk about self-employment for just a moment. Um, I've demonstrated how, you, how to calculate your monthly income from being a W-2 employee, but again, let's briefly discuss income as self-employed and how it changes. Since as a self-employed individual, your income is constantly changing, making it difficult in your first year or even the first couple of years that you're in business to get a strong grasp of what your true income will be, unless you have set yourself up on a salary and the business is doing well enough to consistently pull that amount from the business. A good suggestion would be to take this to your tax attorney for further assistance and suggestions. Let's talk about other income. We had briefly discussed this earlier. Number one is tax refunds. Uh, there are two thoughts regarding tax refunds and I'd like to share both of those with you today. Number one is if you're receiving a large tax refund each year, you might need to adjust your W-4 so that you receive these funds throughout the year since you're essentially giving the government a tax-free loan for that particular tax year. Other thoughts is you intentionally ensure that you get a big refund back by withholding as much taxes as possible and still able to manage your monthly finances so that you treat this as an extension of your savings account. The best thing to do in these two instances is to adjust your W-4 withholdings and learn to have the extra money work for you such as pay off high interest debt, or methodically save it throughout the tax year. Let's talk about property rentals. If you do have a rental property, it is important to analyze this income closely since important questions need to be answered first to determine how much income you will get or how much you will net from the property. Let's, uh, let's go over some questions that you might ask. Is the property in good shape? 
and likely not in need of repair. A second question, how long is the property under lease for and do you have renters in place that will take care of the property? A third question, do you currently owe a mortgage on the rental property? Fourth, do you pay storage fees to possibly furnish, uh, I'm sorry, to store furnishings from the property that you once lived in? And then lastly, after all expenses are paid, what is left over that you can profit from? Let's move into grants and scholarships. Um, although these are linked to education and should be used for such, uh, if you receive a large sum from this source, it's still not a good idea to necessarily use these funds as an extension of your more traditional income. Child support and alimony. Again, it's where you pay or receive this type of income. Uh, in most states regarding child support, you will receive this income until the child turns 18. If you receive alimony, it, is it consistently paid out to you and how long will you receive it? So just by the last few examples, you can see where not only analyzing where the income comes from, you've also got to look at how long will you consistently be receiving it so that you have a good idea of whether or not you really should be using that source of income uh, when purchasing items and things of, of that nature. Uh, let's go over governmental assistance. Um, there are several, or several types of income from the government, such as food stamps, energy assistance programs, along with WIC, which stands for Women, Infant, and Children. Uh, most of these types of incomes are used to be uh, on a short basis only and really should not be considered part of your income. Now, as you can see, there are many types and sources of income that you can apply uh, that, that apply to you. It is important to monitor your income on a regular basis since if you don't have a plan for your money, it is a guarantee that someone else will have a plan for you. Your sources and amount of income may change on a frequent basis, so keeping this a priority will be important since you will need to make changes throughout your finances as your income adjusts upwards and downwards. Um, it's always a good idea that regardless of the plan that you have in place, that you also monitor it closely and make adjustments as necessary. Now you might ask yourself after reviewing this information today, is there any websites that I would recommend on possibly how to calculate how much money you need to retire? Um, I would recommend a few sites. Uh, the first one is www.doughroller, that's D-O-U-G-H-R-O-L-L-E-R dot -E net or www.fidelity.com. Since both of their retirement calculators are robust and full of features to help you. Another question that you might have is, do I know of any additional tools that you can use to help monitor and track your spending? So I would recommend you taking a look at www.mint, that's M-I-N-T, dot com. The program is free on your PC and also free for the app. So nothing better than be able to manage your finances on the go. They help you make sense of your spending, help you track your budget, while ultimately saving you money. With your free account, you'll get loads of features while also giving you peace of mind. Now, I'd like to also take a moment and mention one of First Financial Credit Union's partners. Uh, Green Path and First Financial have partnered up for almost three years and as an additional resource to help educate our members here in New Mexico with topics such as budget counseling, debt counseling, and debt, debt management plans. Most of their services are free of charge, so I'd certainly invite you to get a hold of them. Uh, you can contact them on their website, which is www.greenpath.com for further information. Now, uh, I would ask all of you that are watching today to please post in the comments below a financial topic that you would like to hear more about after the video, and we will be picking two winners at random that will receive a prize. I've had the opportunity to work with many members of First Financial Credit Union that they did not practice the topics that we discussed today. And as a result, they incurred hardships such as being delinquent on loan payments, even worse, having to voluntarily surrender their vehicle. As a certified financial counselor, I've had the opportunity to educate our members, <clears throat> excuse me, and they're able to practice new skills and put themselves in an optimal financial position. And as we've discussed today, it starts with analyzing your income and then putting a spending plan in place. This topic plus others will be discussed here on Facebook Live over the next four weeks on Wednesday at this same time, so please stay tuned for our second presentation, which will be next week. For more information about First Financial Credit Union, 
please go to our website, which is www.ffnm.org, or call us at 505-766-5600. Again, I'm Brad Wallen with First Financial Credit Union, and I want to thank each of you that's tuned in today. I look forward to seeing you again next week for another exciting topic here on Facebook. Thank you.